The well, last great Irish gangster was a guy named Mickey Spillane, who was no relation to the writer. He was once on trial, and they asked him on the witness stand, are you any relation to the writer? And he said, no, but right now I'd like to be. And uh, he was in charge of getting out the gangster vote and the nun vote, and you'd stand there and you'd watch. He'd come up 10th Avenue with all the gangsters and all the nuns all at once to make sure they voted. In came another crew of guys, of younger guys. There was a guy named Mickey Featherstone, who was a Vietnam guy who was a little nutty. And there was a very bad guy named Coonan. When I saw him first, he was the driver for a gangster named Ruby Stein, who was a big loan shark. And when I met him as a kid, he said, how do you do? I'm Ruby Stein, I'm a gangster. And he had Coonan, this little Irish kid, and he treated terribly. But Coonan would sit there, and then the day, of course, came when Coonan cut his head off. How did he cut his head off? He literally cut his head off with a knife. And the Irish guys were always good at shooting people. They're never good at making money. But Coonan wanted to be the first Irish guy to really make money. And he hooked up with Mickey Featherstone, and they hooked up with the Italians, and they were a scary bunch of guys. The cops kind of liked them for one reason, because they could beat them and they never complained. Like Mickey's wife went to pick him up once at Midtown North and he had two blown out black eyes, blood everywhere and all this. And she goes, Mickey. And he goes, they treated me like a prince. There was a guy who opened a new restaurant on 42nd Street, a French bistro. And he called the squad, the detective squad, and said, two guys just came in and said, I have to pay them money every week. And the detective said, what were their names? And he said, Coonan and Featherstone. And the detective said, pay them. But Coonan decided he wanted to get rid of the Featherstones. So all the times Mickey had beat murders that he did do, they set him up for a murder and he got convicted of one he didn't do. So he became a rat. And he thought that it was secret. And then his food at Rikers Island came and someone had written rat with peas in his mashed potatoes. So <laughs> he knew word was out. He ended up testifying against them. He went in the witness protection program. The last time I talked to him, he called and he said that the contractor had come to do the bathroom and hadn't finished the job. And then Mickey said to me, what do you do when you can't shoot people? <laughs>